Life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hello, everyone. Hello, and welcome to the book Extravaganza. Mmm. That's a good word for it. Yes. We had a fun march putting books into our heads. <laughs> yes, I actually did hit the highest number of books in a month ever broke my record mm -hmm. uh, from last year. So as such, we have a lot to talk about today. A whole lot. This is the wrap up for March. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the whole... Do you feel like your book reading for March, did you feel like you had a lot of good books? Or was it just kind of like in the middle, some good, some bad? No, I generally liked the books that I read. I had a lot of five stars this month and a good number of four stars, but I also had a two star, which is not very common for me. <laughs> I'm a positive guy. Yeah, yeah. We tend to both go three star and above. We don't do a lot of under... Unless we've totally DNF'd the book. And I was telling my husband about how much I had read. And I said, well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, I'm stressed out. Number two, I have no social life. And number three, I just read a lot of really good books and I wanted to keep reading. A lot of these books were ones that I were really looking forward to reading. So I blazed through them as fast as I could because I was just loving the experience of reading them. So those were the three reasons why I read. Oh, also because I actually listened to a lot of audiobooks this month and that mm -hmm. tends to push my numbers up because I can listen during work and then read when I'm not at work. So that gives me more books on top of that. I'm a little bit more limited right now. I kind of have to get stuck with just reading audiobooks and comics at this moment because I'm trying to maximize my time for other projects. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I still got more books read this month than last month and even more than the month before. Mm -hmm. So the most this year. So you're kind of growing in the amount of books you read a month, right? I try. I always try to grow. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we stagnate and we just sit there like a fat lump. <laughs> so I think what we're going to do is tell you about our stats and then dive into the books that we want to talk about. Most of these books are going to be, you know, four star and above and maybe a couple under that, but not a lot of mm -hmm. the ones under that. Just ones we think you might be interested in learning more about. Yes. Let's start with the stats. Okay. So for my star ratings, I have seven five-star books. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it was a good month. Wow. Two four-star books, two three-star books, and one two-star book. With a total of how many books? Total of 12. Total of 12. So this month I did a little differently where I had a lot of and a half stars. <laughs> Uh, because I really liked the book, but then I was like, but it's not quite a five-star read. So I have a four five-stars, three 4.5 stars, 13 four-stars, wow. two 3.5 stars, two three-stars, and one 2.5 stars for a total of 25 books this month. I DNF 13. So if you're counting... Yes, that is 38 attempted books. That's crazy, guys. But if it wasn't catching my interest like the ones I was reading and liking, I was like, done, I'm done. I, I'm going to bring up, I'm going to bring up, you totally could adjust your system here since you have so many and a halves. You could just, you know, lower your expectations and make it so that they're all using five, one to five I, and I it really would still could. fit. I really <laughs> could, but I did not. <laughs> 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 okay as far as like how i'm taking in my books this this month right. uh, like i said we're kind of doing a lot more audiobooks and comics so you're gonna see i did six audiobooks mm. uh, then i did three ebooks and these were mostly because they just kind of had to fall on my lap I, I needed to do some reviewing of them uh, one of them was a physical book and two of them were comic books. Nice. I read 
12 ebooks this Ooh. month, yes. Seven audiobooks, which is actually more than you, which is interesting. Yeah. And six physical books. One of my goals this year is not only trying to get through my NetGalley review arcs as as in a good amount of time as possible, get my percentage up there to 100%, but also to read a lot of the physical books I'm getting from Owl Crate and Book of the Month mm-hmm. and really make that a priority to read them as they come in. So that's one of the reasons why my physical book is starting to grow a little bit, but also I'm reading a lot of ebooks. I would also say that my adult, young adult, is kind of a weird mix right now. I'm reading 22 adult books and three young adult books, but I think that's generally why I always have a higher adult book is because I like thrillers. Mm-hmm. They are not young adult books most of the time. Sometimes, but not all the time. Okay. As far as genres go, I've kind of got uh, I've got a good blend. There's four of them that are sci-fi, which like you know that's where my comic books go into mm-hmm. most of the time. Three fantasy, two thriller. And then three of them are kind of the other category, but because they are nonfiction. Uh, Right, okay. Mm -hmm. I have ten uh, that are thriller or horror. I have two fantasy, eight romance or a contemporary genre, two historical fiction, and three nonfiction books. Mm -hmm. Now, nonfiction to me also means cookbook, Yeah. which I did read two of those this month, so that's kind of... It's a fudge, but it's not a fudge because, I mean, it's a legit book. It just doesn't take me as long to read cookbooks as it does other books. Because of the number of these, like, cookbooks, that was one of the things I was also uh, involved in my physical book reading and stuff like that. I'm starting to wonder if I should break up my other category to take nonfiction in a separate category Mm -hmm. because that's something that I oftentimes will have to do readings for. Right. But that means I'm going to have to go through and really rebuild a lot of my book of uh, stats here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. How many pages did you read this month? 4,227. And what is your total to to date this year? It ends up being 10,400 something or other. Uh Just a little bit under what I needed to reach level 17. Oh, gotcha. So my total pages this month was 9,071. And the reason why both of ours are pretty high is because we read one book that was over 700 pages Mm -hmm. or listened to a book that was over 700 pages. Uh, My total to date pages is 19,905, which gives me a level 20. My total books this year Uh so far, which I am also tracking through uh, my planner and Goodreads, is 55. Now, I do have my Goodreads challenge for the year is at 104. So that's conceivably if I was going to read two books a month. And here we are at the end of the third month. I am halfway through my goal. So that tells you how above my goal. Last year, I did twice as much as my Goodreads challenge of 104. So I'm expecting to hit that again this year, at least. We are probably going to talk at the end of the podcast about our books that we are much looking forward to from April that we're going to read. Um, But for now, let's talk about the ones we read and liked, or maybe didn't like, (laughs) in the month of March. Well, let's start on a positive note. Well, I actually read, in my four-star category, I read two really good thrillers. Uh, Both of them I actually listened to on audiobook. One I got from NetGalley and one I got from Libro. I'm an influencer for Libro as well. So I get free audiobooks from them, but I do also subscribe to their monthly listening plan. So I I purchase books. So it's not not that I'm just getting everything free, Mm -hmm. but I do get a lot of the free ones and they are release new releases or upcoming releases and i believe good sister was one of those so i was read the good sister by sally hepworth i did not know anything about this and i had it in my cart and i was like well it's a thriller i might as well read it and you know it's my kind of book i might be surprised and i was um it is if you read the plot synopsis it is the story of twins one of them is uh she's got sensory issues So she can't be around a lot of like lights or loud sounds or she she can't take it. Uh, She works at a library, which is cool for her. So she's very like into researching. She's very smart. Her other twin has pretty much been taking care of her all her life. And this story is told back and forth between 
the first person of the sens sensory impaired twin and the journal of the other twin. And the way this book begins is that one of the twins, I believe it's the one with the sensory impairment, uh, she has been found to have killed a boy who's about her age by drowning him in a lake, I think. So the, the biggest thing that you're trying to figure out in this whole thing, this whole story, is did she do it? And why did she do it if she did do it? But there's also some other storylines woven in around the way. Um, what I really liked about this book was how she was portrayed. Um, I don't think I've seen a lot of main characters that have this kind of, you know, disability. And I was really excited to see how functioning she was and how she was made to be this person that was like just really positive and open and loving to people, even though she couldn't really touch people because she didn't like to be touched because of her condition. And I thought that was just, it was so great. I just, I really loved the way it was portrayed and I really liked the ending. I thought the ending was, was pretty, pretty fun and interesting. Hmm, okay. The other audiobook that I was going to talk about is called The Drowning Kind. It's by Jennifer McMahon. I believe this either just came out or is coming out in April. It is the story of two of, actually, I think it's told between two. Again, this is a, a very common uh, method of telling the story. The one part of the story is told in the past, again, through journals. And, yeah. <laughs> but it's told about a woman who desperately wants a child and she and her husband go to this resort with a hot springs and they are supposed to bathe in the water and it's supposed to give them, you know, health and vitality. Um, but there's a legend that it will grant you a wish. But like they say, if they, if they give you a wish, they also take something from you. So then in the present time that it's told by the main character's sister has just died from drowning in the pool in the backyard. But as you can find out, there is a connection between that resort and this place where the sister lives and has drowned in the pool. So you're trying to find out the connection between it. I thought this book was stunning. It was so good because it was so creepy because you never really had a handle on how the story was being told. Like what part of it was true? What part of it was just like imagined sensationalism about this like lore of, you know, what's yeah. happening, you know? I, I think it, it was just so interesting and I I loved it. I mean, I gave it four stars. There were a couple parts in the middle where I got really confused about what was going on because of the back and forth. But I think that if I had read it instead of listened to it, I would have not had that issue. I gotcha. How, that being said, though, the audiobook was great. But I also had one that I read by myself. Um, it's called Dating Sucks, But You Don't by Connell Barrett. This was a, a little different of a book for me. This is, this kind of fits into the nonfiction side of things um, because this book was all about, for, for men specifically, to approach women in, in a, you know, I want to pick up a girl kind of thing. But it's not skeezy. It's not got a bunch of tricks. It's not designed to make you a player. It's designed to make you a more authentic person. I was going to ask if it was kind of like Creepy Stalker. No. Pickup lines. No, there is no pickup line. Well, actually, he does mention pickup lines, but they're not creepy. And he doesn't train you on like, this is how to do it. He's like, I, I made this line once. But this is the rest of the story. Because what this book is about is more accepting yourself and loving yourself so that you can be confident around people and then present your true self to them so that the right kind of woman will respond to it and fall in love with you. So after reading this book, how does that change your viewpoint about dating, especially right now during COVID? I, I feel like I could possibly actually, uh, once we get out of COVID, once I'm in a financially stable spot to go dating, I could actually go up to a random stranger and be like, hi, I would like to date you. Not in those exact words. Right. But, hi, I find you attractive. Right. And not feel like the weirdo in the corner having to chase them around. Did they have 
a viewpoint about online dating. Yes, there was an entire chapter on how to set up your Tinder profile. Wow. There was also an entire chapter on how to deal with consent in the Me Too era. That is helpful. It was an extremely helpful book. And again, it isn't about toxic masculinity. It's about avoiding toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. So I would actually recommend this book to any gentleman who is out there on the market. Maybe even some that are still married because it might help you to be more uh, open to your wife, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, Be the kind of man that she wants you to be. One book I did want to talk about, but I'm not actually going to talk about it until next month. Mm -hmm. is Every Value Break by Peter Swanson. I just want to touch on it because I did read it. Marshall is currently reading it, so I don't really want to give a lot of spoilers or talk about it that much. I'm one third of the way through it, and it started off slow for me, but I'm into it now. Right. It was the same for me, and that was one of the reasons why I gave it 4.5 stars instead of 5 stars. I think it's really well written, and I was so creeped out in this book and I think the reason why because I'm a woman and the main character is a woman and I can't I don't want to give away a lot because like all these other people have said when they review this book do not read the synopsis just go in and listen to it or read the book without reading the synopsis I thought it was going to be a lot like the guest list or another book I just recently read called Her Dark Lies because they, they said it had to take place with a wedding, but it's really that she is on her honeymoon yeah. on this island. And that is all I'm going to tell you, but I think you should read it and make your own conclusions. I did guess the ending though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that. I was not as shocked as a lot of people seem to be. I don't know. I just... I just had a feeling about it. Although, like, I'm sitting here, even at the point that I'm at, and all of the red flags, they're, like, flying in every direction. Why? Why? Well, that is part of it, too, is that there's a lot of misdirection that happens with this. Because it, it makes you think, oh, this is what's really going on, but... Mm-hmm. Maybe not. <laughs> Yeah. But maybe it's his, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Another book I read, and I haven't heard a lot talked about really because it was in Book of the Month and I had never heard of it before. And it's called The Lost Apothecary. Guess what, guys? It's told between the present day and the past in journals. Do you see a trend going on here? Uh, wh- could we get some that are told in journals, but some of them are in the present day and some of them are in the future? <laughs> That would be cool. (laughs) The journals are between two women in the past. One is an apothecary, but her job as an apothecary is she's secret because she poisons or other ways, mostly it's poison, the men of women who come to her for help for whatever reason. Maybe they're being battered. Maybe they're being cheated on because because of reasons from her past, she's decided she is now in the business of helping women for revenge. And in the present, a woman comes to the same spot and she does this thing called, oh gosh, I wish I could remember what it's called. But the basic premise of what she's doing is when the river, what's the river in the... Thames? Yes. So when... <laughs> I haven't even read this book. I know more about it. <laughs> Seriously. So when the river goes low tide, people go down into the riverbed and they search for items in the riverbed. One of the traditions in the area is that men would go to the river with their intended to propose. And there was something about how they would like bend the ring and then like give it to her. And if she said she didn't want to marry him, she'd throw the ring into the river. So a lot of times these people would be, it's not spelunking, but it's kind of like that. I can't remember the name. And they will find these rings. But she ends up finding a vial, a blue vial with this bear on it. And that kind of sends her down this archeological rabbit hole of where did this thing come from? And so she is researching this apothecary in the past. It was a very interesting book, especially how a lot of the things paralleled what women were, what was happening to the women in the past. But yeah, I I think it was a really good book. I mean, I gave it 4.5 stars. I don't think it's Marshall's kind of book, though. I enjoy history a little bit more than I think 
some people think I do, but if it's if it's not really like exciting story, it might it might slow me down. Like I might have a difficult time finishing it. Yeah. Then there's two books that we both read. Right. One of them is The Midnight Library. Oh yes. By Matt Haig. And this is the story of a woman who has had a lot of things go wrong in her life Mm -hmm. and decides that she no longer wants to be in her life. And in the moments that she is struggling in her suicide attempt, she finds herself at a library. And in this library is all the possible choices that she could have made and how her life would be at that same moment in her life had she made those other chase choices. Right. Mm-hmm. This is this was a really great psychological book. Mm-hmm. This is not a story that is all about thrilling twists. No. It is all about self-discovery uh-huh. and forgiving yourself. And connecting with something. Yes. I think what I have heard... I have, n- I have not heard one person say they do not like this book who has read it. Mm-hmm. I was a little hesitant to pick it up because there's a certain part of me that gets really stubborn about overhyped things. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. (laughs) And then I do it and I'm like, dang it, it's good. That's kind of how it was for me for this. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the book was just so well done at connecting to you through the character and her decisions. And it really made you want to root for her to find the happiness that she was looking for, to make her life better. And you really went on that journey with her to figure out what it was. Mm -hmm. When I first heard about this book from you, the first thing that I was thinking about was this video game series called Persona. Because in every single one of these, there's this series of dungeons called the Midnight Somethings where you're dealing with people's psychological traumas. And I feel like that was very much what this is all about. It's re- almost replaying them in a different way mm-hmm. so that you can get over all of these regrets and then actually live your life. Right. I, I really loved how it ended and how she came to accept herself because it isn't necessarily what you would think. Right, yeah. I don't want to spoil it because... It wasn't what I was expecting, and yet it kind of was. Like, you Mm -hmm. knew that you were going to get to this point somewhere, but you figured something else would happen to it to get her out of this. Right, yeah. I loved that. Yeah, that's that's what I mean by the journey of it all. Yeah. How does she get to that point? Yeah, it was it was great. And yeah, you're right. If we talk more about it, we will really give it away, and I don't Mm want to... I don't want to give it away. But the other thing that I thought was really good, and this doesn't really spoil much, is that her experience was real Mm -hmm. because she actually gains knowledge from her multiple life experiences that helps somebody else right yeah when she goes back to her normal life Mm -hmm. and i thought that was a really cool little twist right yeah and they do try and actually bring this together with uh multiverse theory and parapsychology Mm -hmm. so that that was it's right up my alley right (laughs) the other book was the silent patient by alex Michaelitis. Alex Michaelitis has a book coming out this year called The Maidens. And my preference was I did not know anything about either one of these. The covers of both of them really made me think, oh gosh, this is going to be one of those like really pretentious, boring novels where like you just fall asleep in the $75 words and I wasn't interested. But then um, I was listening to Gabby over at Gabby Reads and she said that this was her favorite thriller of all time. And I am very close in my reading styles to Gabby, not always, but mostly close. So I said, you know what, fine, I'm just going to read this book. So I got it on audio from the library and I read it and I was floored. I was shocked. I I was <laughs> I was about an 45 minutes to an hour away from being done and I had taken my husband to a doctor's appointment and I'm sitting in the car in the parking garage and things start happening and I'm uh, gasping freaking out looking in my rearview mirror because I'm creeped 
I'm very creeped. <laughs> And all while I'm in this parking garage and I came home and I was like, you, you need to read this book, Marshall. This is a, this book is amazing. And I totally agree. This was probably my, if it wasn't my favorite book of the year so far, it was definitely my favorite book of this month Mm -hmm. Yes, because this builds up so much tension and connection to the characters through a very slow simmer Mm -hmm. that isn't boring. It's a, It's just this slow simmer of, you, you know something's going on. Where's all these hints? I know that there's hints. Tell me the hints. And then all of a sudden you get towards this spot where you got to mm-hmm. and it's off. It's gone. Like, wait, where is the train? I am just sitting here on the tracks. I don't know what's going on anymore. And That's, it all comes together. <laughs> it all comes together in, in just... I don't think we can talk too much about the actual plot, but basically what this is is that a woman is blamed for the murder of her husband. Uh, He was shot five times in the face, and afterwards she refuses to talk. Forever. Uh, So they believe that she is now psychotic, and they send her to a place called The Grove. The other... Most of the story is told by uh, her psychiatrist or psychotherapist, who comes to the Grove immediately afterwards and... It's also told through her journals. It is also told through her journals. (laughs) Yet, there is a point, and this doesn't spoil anything, where he gets the journals. So in a way, it could still all be his perspective. Right, yes, true. Yeah. Could be him reading the journals. But because we listened to it on audiobook, it was a woman's voice during the journal, so there is that. I highly recommend the audiobook. I do too. Highly recommend it, it is excellent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Did you listen to the author's uh, interview at the end of the book? I did not. Okay, it's very interesting because he, this is his first book. He does write, like, I think he wrote for, like, movies or TV shows of yeah. some kind. Uh, so this was an interesting transition, but he does talk at the end of the book about where his inspiration came from and why he wanted to write a book and uh it kind of gives a lot of insight into his little twisted mind i have to say um but i'm very excited for the maidens i i I will definitely be picking i'm interested yeah yeah he he's got my attention Mm -hmm. there are two other books that i gave five stars that i do want to talk about the first one is malibu rising it comes out later this year i believe it comes out around june or july Um, and it is the new taylor jenkins read book and i was so excited that i got an advanced copy from NetGalley. It is the story of a family of surfers. Uh, and so in the present, it is told over one night. They are surfing. They have their yearly party, end of the summer party, at the daughter's, the oldest daughter's house. And you know that something happens during the party and there's a fire. But if you know anything about California history or California prison, California is always on fire somewhere. And they do talk about that at the beginning, how all the different times that Malibu, which is where they live, is on fire. Yeah. Uh, so it's not, that's it, not really a spoiler. Malibu's on fire. And then you also find out about the parents of this children, these children surfers. I say children, but they're like in their 20s. And I think one of them's 17. I think the youngest is like 17 and the rest are like in their 20s. And you find out, you know, I think their dad is like a singer. And then you find out about their mom. So you also see what kind of leads them to the life that they are in right now. And what has caused them to be these people. And then it bounces back and forth between the two of them. Uh, This book is so good. And uh, again, another winner by Taylor Jenkins Reid. She's really becoming like one of my favorite authors. And really has me loving historical fiction again. But Even just the setting, you know, I'm from California. So when we talk about Malibu, which I am not from, I'm from Northern California, but I still know the feeling of being on the West Coast, on the cliffs above Santa Cruz and like seeing people surf and just having that, you know, beach lifestyle. Well, when we were in high school, I went to the beach all the time. And I feel like this was a very comfortable book for me. It was something Mm -hmm. that I felt like was going home almost a little bit when they talk about that aspect of it. So the biggest thing about this is not only because it's a historical fiction, but it's also kind of a mystery is about the fire and what happens to the party, what what is going on with this fire, because the fire does play a part in this book. How, How does this book sound to you? 
I'm not sure. To be honest, I'm kind of like, mm, I don't know. The The historical fiction aspect of it seems kind of interesting, but like, I don't want to just do a book about somebody's crazy party. Uh, I've never been a party dude, so party Well, <laughs> yeah, I understand what you mean by that, but it's not all about the party. I, like I said, it's back and forth, and I think okay. the party is just where it all comes to a head, really. I think at least some point this year you should try to read one Taylor Jenkins Reid novel. I've read it. I have on my list to do the, the seven... The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo? Yes. Probably a good one to start with, I think. Everyone seems to like that one. Yeah. The last five-star book that I read is one that is also coming out, I believe, May 1st. And it is called Local Woman Missing, and it's by Mary Kubica. I was not really sure about requesting this book. I have read a couple Mary Kubica. They didn't really hit me very well, so I was like, eh. All right, I'll give her one more chance. And I actually really enjoyed this book. I don't think it was as good as my other five-star reads, but I, it was definitely up there. And it is the story of two women who disappear. So first one disappears, and then the second one disappears with her six-year-old daughter. 11 years later, the six-year-old daughter comes back. And the story is told in multiple perspectives of not just... The second woman who goes missing in the past. The daughter in the past, but also kind of the present. And the son, so he would be the brother of the girl who goes missing, who is two years younger than she is, but was left behind. Mm -hmm. Also in the present. And then one of the next door neighbors in the past. And also in the present. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it kind of jumps around a lot in the timelines, it, but not in a confusing way at all. It, it's really about what happened to the daughter. Why did the women go missing? Did they find them? And then how does the daughter deal with coming back after 11 years and just being shell-shocked because of where she was? Mm-hmm. It w- It's just really interesting. And the twist at the end... Whew, yeah, I actually did not... Did not see it coming, which is why I gave it a five. There were parts in the book that were like just a tad bit slow in the middle, but the payoffs are all there and all great. Good. So I recommend if you like thriller books, you will love this book. I'm pretty sure. I do enjoy thrillers. There, there is one book though. We oh yes, there is. We 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 both read this book, and it is not on our five star list. It is on my list as a three star. Oh, I got it. I give it a two point five. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Which really disappoints me, especially because I did enjoy the other books in the series. And that is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Moss. We were not fans. I was not a fan of this book. No. There was a large cast that didn't really get de- that deeply put into. Um, like, as characters, we didn't really get into them. The men treated the women like crap. And then they were the women were expected to turn around and be like, Oh, I want you. No. Yeah, the, no. No. There was a, about a half, half of this book I could have done without because it was literally just boo-hoo, boo-hoo, bang, 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 bang. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really have an issue with the sex scenes in the other books. I thought it was yeah. fine. But I felt like this one was so, like, every chapter I had to skip ahead because I was like, are they doing it again? It's not furthering the story. I am not a fan of sex for not furthering the story. Uh, I think it has to have a purpose. It has to show vulnerability. It has to show violence, if that's what you're trying to show. I mean, whatever it is, I felt like this showed nothing except for I'm horny and I want to make my book long. I don't know. I felt like if she wanted to do this, why, why didn't she split this book up into two stories? I don't understand why it had to be over 700 pages. I felt like if it was, it, it kind of had a feel of two stories anyway. I could have put this as three separate stories. Yeah, like I, I just, I don't understand the decision that was made for this. Um, I feel like the fans probably would have been happier. Not that they weren't happy. I know most people love this book and I'm in the minority here. But I feel like the hands would have been happier if she had just put out three books instead of one big one. Yeah. And we would have gotten a lot more exploration of these super artifacts that show up out of nowhere. I think the main reason why this book is so filled with spicy is because the main character, now her name is flying away from me. Nesta. Nesta. She really likes romance novels and she likes them spicy. She Mm -hmm. likes... She likes that sort of thing. So this book is kind of written 
in her headspace. Right. But I think Sarah might have gotten herself a little bit too much into Nesta's head. Right, yeah, yeah. Like I said, if it furthers a story, it furthers a story. But after a little while, I was like, this is not... Yeah. I understand. She likes the, sex. The last half it. of this book, though, was amazing. Oh, yes. I loved the la- the last half, which is probably where the point five came from. Yeah. Um, I really wished I could have, have done it harder. And you guys know me. I'm very positive about... I tend to over point overstar my books um a lot and other people are like i hated this book and i'm like ah three stars (laughs) you know so you guys know how i really feel bad about this and i do i really wanted to love this book i was just Mm -hmm. so disappointed i've i had to skip through so much yeah so as you know we didn't talk about the full amount of books that we did read this month I will be posting all the books I read on my Instagram and you'll be able to see my wrap up that's coming up this week as well. So you can see all the books I read and then the reviews come, you know, at least once a day I post a different book review on my Instagram. Why don't you tell me about the books that you didn't talk about? The books I didn't talk about, I did do both Arch Enemies and Supernova by Marissa Meyer. These are the uh, last two of the trilogy for Renegades. I really enjoyed them, although the second book is now starting to get kind of blurry in my mind. It is not a Laney thing. She's not really no, that much into it. No, but I, I do bored. love superhero stories. Yes. I also did He Started It, which did get a five star from me. Uh, this was a very good thriller mystery story about kids on a rehash of a childhood road trip. And that's by Samantha Downing. Mm -hmm. I also did Namesake by Adrian Young. That's the second one of Fable, uh, which had the same kind of issues that I had with the original Fable. Girl on the seas, but I can't connect with anybody but her. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. I, the comics that I did were Metal Men, which we do talk about in the last Spinnerack Kids that we talked we, we talked about my issues there. I also read Rise of Ultraman, which is a great throwback to old uh, Japanese monster shows. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really good, actually. And Press Here, Reiki for Beginners by Victor Arcalera. This is the one that got two stars from me, mm-hmm. uh, just because I didn't feel like it really gave you a whole lot. Right, okay. Yeah. But Reiki is something that you wanted to learn more about? I'm always interested in that. Uh, Mm -hmm. Reiki, various massage techniques, stuff like that, just because I end up having to use them both on myself and uh, helping other people that are in pain in my life. All right, so let us talk about what we are reading for the month of April that we are excited about do you have any that you are thinking of? I do. I'm uh, Like we've said, I'm currently going through every value break. Uh, I started just yesterday. Mm-hmm. But also loaded up on my phone, ready to go, is This Present Darkness by Frank E. Peretti. Troy it's by Stephen Fry. Very much like the Mythos book that we already did last year. This That's, is him going through the this Troy This is the world. third one. Yeah, there's yeah. a second one that we haven't gotten yet. Called though. Heroes. Right. Yeah. Uh, I also have loaded up Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. I'm mm-hmm. going to give give this one a shot. I liked Six of Crows. Did not. Yeah, and you also didn't really get too much into Shadow and Bone Yeah, either. I gave up. I don't know if Lee Bardugo is my thing or what is going on, but I'm very excited for the Netflix series, though, so I will let that be my substitute. And just... Just in case, I also threw in a really fast one, and I don't even know if I'm going to like it or not, but I wanted to throw in a horror, and so that's Carmilla by J. Sheridan Lefanu. Where did you find that? That was on our um, on our Audible. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's probably one of those Audible original ones we got way back when. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. I also have a huge list of comics, but we'll really be getting into that with Spinner Rack Kids, because that's going to be with Corey. Right. So the books that I am really excited about is I'm going to be reading Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey for book club. I And I feel like listening to it on audiobook is the only way to do this book because all right, all right, all right. Mm-hmm. For book of the month, I got The Hunting Wives by May Cobb and People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. And I'm probably going to read those the minute they hit my door because I was so excited when I found out that those books were in the box because they were on my list of books to purchase since I didn't get approved for arcs for those. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also going to read Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid because I haven't read that one yet. So I'm excited to 
to read another one of those. I think after that, I only have one or two that I haven't read, but they're like the lesser ones. Um, I also have All's Well by Mona Awad. It's kind of a really dark version of like All's Well That Ends Well. And I think they put on a a production of it, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then I also have The Therapist by B.A. Paris. And I did get an arc for that one as well. I didn't really like B.A. Paris's last, I think it was Behind Closed Doors. I really, oh no, no. Behind Closed Doors was the one I liked. It was the one that came after that. Now I don't remember what it's called. So I'm a hit or miss when it comes to B.A. Paris, so I really hope I like this one, and that's the other one. Other than that, I don't really have anything else planned. It's kind of an as-it-comes type of thing. Okay. Yeah, that is March. That is March, and a preview of April, and... um... So, thank you for listening to Elated Geek. Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on things we talked about in today's podcast. You can find Lainey on at Zany Laney or me at One True Hazard. You can also find at Elated Geek on our Instagram. And you can also find Elated Geek Tweets on Twitter. If you want to go to a website, we have www.elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us to continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd out about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send us your geek obsessions or topics that you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Email us at share at elatedgeek.com. And until next time, geek out. So how you doing on Animal Crossing? <laughs> <laughs>